I'm Ethan, the chief architect of To Everything and the creator of Block Suite. It's really my pleasure to introduce this project to all of you today. At first glance, you might think that Block Suite is just yet another rich text editor, but in fact, the architecture and the way it works is a lot different from the popular editors of today. In our design, we didn't just implement a specialized editor. To meet the needs of a file and give it another name and put it in another Git repository. Instead, in the Block Suite project, we are developing a fundamental framework for building local-first, block-based applications, and the editor that a file uses is just one example of a product based on Block Suite. So, how is Block Suite different? I think it can be summarized in three parts. Firstly, Block Suite uses CRDT as the general-purpose state management mechanism. Secondly, Block Suite can orchestrate rich text content by discrete blocks rather than using a monolith content editable container. Finally, Block Suite is independent of common UI frameworks. Currently, we have even built other rendering backends for Block Suite outside of the DOM. Let's start with the first part about the CRDT data model. If you haven't heard of CRDT, you can assume that it's basically used in the same way as data structures like string, math, and array that JavaScript developers will usually use. The only special feature is that CRDT records and checks the full history of operations and automatically resolves conflict during real-time collaboration based on this history. So, what's the difference here? If you have used some currently popular rich text editors, you probably know that in order to update content, you usually have to learn some framework-specific concepts like transform, command, operation, actions, and so on. This is because in these editors, your actions have to be modeled as these serializable data structures in order to achieve undo redo in a reasonable way. However, in the CRDT we are using, each individual update to text, array, and map is already a traceable operation, so you no longer need to learn these framework-specific DSLs when using CRDT. To update the state of your, our block tree, you only need to use simple ATIs like add block, update block, delete block, which are as simple as manipulating a to-do list. Based on this design, this block tree can efficiently achieve time travel and runtime without the need to configure a special middleware. And all the state updates here are incremental by design. Furthermore, since CRDT has its stable serialized format internally, and can also encode partial operations as incremental update data, this allows us to easily distribute changes on the network and local storage. On top of this, we have built a set of provider-based data persistent backends that allow you to update state with only synchronous model changes, with the underlying provider handles all underlying I.O. operations regardless of whether the data ends up in a local database or in the cloud. So, based on the data model in Block Suite, our design pattern has changed substantially. No matter whether your workspace needs to sync to the cloud or not, you can manage the state as if you were developing a local application. This can significantly benefit both the development experience and the user experience. This is one of the biggest benefits of the non of local bus architecture. Now, Block Suite is deeply built on top of YJS, which is one of the world's fastest CRDT libraries. And we are working closely with its author, Kevin James, to ensure that Block Suite's use of CRDT is in line with best practice. The CRDT-based architecture of Block Suite has many 
different improvements possible that will otherwise be difficult for editors to implement. Perhaps the most important of these is how to model rich text content. Traditionally, an entire article will need to be placed in a single so-called content editable, which leverages the browser's native capabilities but poses a significant risk because you can't control how the browser will modify the DOM in its container when you do something dangerous. But in Block Suite, you can think of for 100 text blocks that will be created when there are 100 paragraphs in the article, where each block is an instance of a standalone text editor, which means that 100 separate and controllable content editables that only handles text. So, for non text blocks like images and even tables, they no longer need to be placed inside content editable anymore. The prerequisites of doing this is to have a centralized block store to organize the state of blocks, which is perfectly achieved by the CRDT block tree. Finally, based on this simplified architecture, the editor in each text block actually uses very little of the functionality required in traditional rich text editors. This allows us to independently implement our own text editor, which we call Virgo, in a matter of weeks, not months. And in the future, we will we'll continue to refine this editor and switch to using it fully in Block Suite. Building on the block based architecture mentioned just now, Block Suite also makes a number of breakthroughs in terms of extensibility. First, we use web components to define all the blocks, so in the future, all the third-party blocks can be developed with any framework and framework you are familiar with just by encapsulating your component inside a web component. Not only that, the affine editor at the moment is also a standardized web component that you can use by installing Brosby right now. Secondly, we highly allow and encourage the idea that data from applications such as forms, Kanban, documents can essentially share the same model but only belong to a different view. Based on this idea, we have implemented multiple container blocks for Avi so that content blocks can have different layout and selection UI states in different containers. Based on our block model, you can easily implement block containers with another framework to build a collaborative application that is completely different from Afi, but shares the same local first technical advantage as Afi. Finally, based on our block model, you don't even necessarily need to render blocks in the DOM. In the current whiteboard of Afi, which is what we call the address mode, we have implemented an experimental canvas renderer that renders the top-level whiteboard contents exclusively. The state management of this content can also be managed entirely based on BlockSuite's CRDT data store. We will continue to improve the functionality of this renderer and the whiteboard to deliver a more robust editing experience in future releases. Well, here we have covered the best things to know about Block Suite right now. But there is one more thing to announce, which is that we have built a prototype of database block based on the state management capabilities of Block Suite. And now, I will let our full stack engineer Alex to introduce this part. Let's talk about database block. In addition to many basic functions of database products, such as shorting and filtering, our database benefits from architecture support of block suite. We support the easily conversation of any regular block, like paragraph block or list block, into the expected database block and allow users to transform between each row and the regular block with the ability to save all columns information in the whole workspace. Furthermore, we also provide arbitrary switching between various wheels, Kanban, timeline, schedule, list, and even more. Finally, we also support the third-party plugin for the database, which can support custom data types and custom wheels from a fine community.